Hi, I'm Simon Harvey, and I'm from Ivory Egg. Today I'm talking to you about one of our really great manufacturers, Theban. In particular, I'm going to look at the problematic inrush currents of what LEDs mean and what Theban's response or the innovation and how they've dealt with it with their products. The innovation of LED fittings has been revolutionary. It's reduced the cost of ongoing cost of loads and it's the longevity of the light fittings has got much increased thanks to LED. We've dissipated a lot of heat, but nothing's for free. And in this innovation, we've come across a few nasty things. And a few of the nasty things is us ability to control those LEDs. And in particular, LEDs are great for when they're running, but when they start up, there's a lot of inrush current and it's not something that everyone's aware of. So Theban have looked at, you know, a typical fitting and what it means to change it to an LED fitting. And what you'd have is if you were changing a 60 watt incandescent or halogen lamp at the entrance of your home, what would that mean when switching to a similar brightness for an LED? And we see in this table here that around about 60 watt incandescent is somewhere to equal to the light output of a 10 watt LED fitting. So originally we were using around about 2.6 amps and now with the LED fitting we're using about 0.04 amps which is really good. It's 15 times less of energy. But the real problem comes in when we're starting that up and the inrushes that come with that. And so as an industry, it's very hard to get this kind of data from any of the manufacturers and a lot of them don't know it from the lighting manufacturers. So Theban, typical engineering brilliance, have decided to test some of their fittings just to see, and some of the market fittings, just to see exactly how these come out. What they end up doing is rigging up a full lab with an oscilloscope and looking at all the rush current LEDs and measuring the wattages compared to the startup currents of a lot of the popular and even some of their own LEDs. So first off the cab, a fairly common LED is an Osram LED. Uh, it's a four and a half watt LED drawing a minimal of 0.09195 amps. But when they measured that inrush current for that very split second, it was actually up to 6.01 amps that's 312 times higher than the original running current. If we have a look at Philips, another very common LED that's swapped. The calculations on that is around about 10 watts, but what that means is once it starts up, it's actually pulling about 3.4 watts, which is nearly 70 time, 79 times percent higher, or 70 times higher than the original run, time, uh, run amps. And we can go through a number of manufacturers. Here we have one that is six watts to run and uh, a little as 0.26 amps. And on startup for that very quick amount of time, it's actually pulling 5.8 amps, which is 220 times higher the startup current compared to the run current. And so on and so forth. You'll see a lot of similar LEDs. Not to mind you, uh, Theban are not here to throw any stones or poke any sticks. Um, they've tested their own fittings as well and some of their uh, leader LED down um, spotlights um, we can see here you know it's uh, using on a normal draw 0.04 amps which is next to nothing but when it's starting up it's using like 18.75 amps that's that's 460 times the actual run current it's huge and we can go on all day and, and have a look at different fittings and stuff like that. So what they started to look at, what does this mean to the control equipment? Well, uh, if we have a look at a fresh set of contacts out of one of their devices, um, this is uh, a contact of 40,000 switching cycles without any load. We look at that same contact and we have 40,000 switching cycles with a capacitive loads of 42 microfarads. You can start to see some of the issues here. 
And you can see the contact state with 40,000 switching loads using an LED with retrofit amps, even though there's less um, draw, they've still got that inrush current. So maybe um, Theban have a solution. So the first of their ingenious solutions is looking at the zero switch point. So we all know electrical is transmitted in a sine wave and it, tr it alternates between positive and negative, okay? The points where it switches over the zero point is the less uh, potential in the whole area. So what they've actually made is smart electronic devices which have the ability to pinpoint when the load is crossing over the zero point and make the switching calculations and the switching times then. This can save a lot of potential. The second solution is tungsten pre-contact. This is really ingenious. So basically what it is is two contacts and when you first turn on the load, a high ohmic resistance contact comes in first. That just comes in to connect it and to dissipate that real high draw and not ruin the second contacts. The second contacts that come in, they're much lower resistance and they're the normal contacts. And they don't get damaged because the high resistive uh, tungsten contacts have taken all the load out. Again, this is adding to longevity uh, maintenance, uh, all kinds of things. So what we can see with these kind of switching maneuvers is up to 800 amps for for uh, a short period of time of dissipation. Just looking through their range, um, the type of technology that's been devised in each of the devices is the following. So most of their relay devices with 16 amps, it can actually handle up to 800 amps for 200 microseconds, okay? That's using the tungsten to contact approach. And if you have a look at some of their higher range uh, actuators or uh, load controllers, basically for their 16 amps, they can handle up to 1500 amps for 200 microseconds. And that's employing the second type of technology, which is a zero contact technology. So again, this is another way that Theban are leading the way with technology and making products that are really affecting our market. They're making products that last longer and are more so robust, stronger, to deal with the ways of technology changes. If you'd like more information, please hit us up or visit us at ivory.com.au. Bye.